Hey everyone! Um, this is going to be a video today going back um, and recapping or rereading, I guess, um, the prologue and chapter one. Um, so, my friends, my um, students, if anyone didn't remember that chapter, um, we read it at school, but it's kind of been a little while now. Um, so, if you want to go back and listen to it, that's what we're going to read today. Um, outside because it's so nice out like we are so lucky for it to not be raining like it has the past 900 days it seems like um so that's what we're going to be listening to today it's the prologue in chapter one um and for our new friends joining us um we're reading the doll people by ann martin um this is one of the first pictures of the inside of the doll house um so we're actually going to have two families in this story, the doll family and then the Funcraft family. Um, and this is the house of the doll family, which is a very old um, China set of dolls, um, which we learned China meant like really breakable, like glass type dolls you wouldn't really play with rough like you do kind of your toys now. Um, so yeah. Um, and this is the first picture here with the prologue. This is going to be our main character, Annabelle doll. And can tell looking at this picture you can kind of go ahead and make some predictions about what you think Annabelle's character is going to be like she doesn't really look happy she doesn't really look sad she looks like her mind is somewhere else she's kind of wondering about something so we're going to learn more about her now all right so here's the prologue it had been 45 years since Annabelle doll had last seen Auntie Sarah and 45 years is a very long time especially for an eight-year-old girl the dollhouse where Annabelle lived with her family hadn't changed much over these years. True, tiny things had been added or had been broken or lost. A rug that had been laying on the floor under the dollhouse had been taken away and never replaced. Panes of glass had fallen out of some of the windows in the dollhouse, and the wallpaper in the kitchen had been painted over, but those were small changes. The dolls themselves had remained much the same as well. Their china skin was a bit grayer, their clothes were a bit more frayed, but otherwise they looked almost the same as they had the day Auntie Sarah was lost. In fact, the dolls looked very much the same as they had the day they first arrived at 26 Weatherby Lane. However, they had once been a family of eight, if you included, as the dolls did, the children's nanny as a member of the family. And now they were a family of seven. Outside the dollhouse, in Kate's room and beyond, Everything changed. Little girls grew up and had little girls of their own. People left the house and went to work or on vacations. History was made. Things happened. But inside the dollhouse, not much had happened as far as Annabelle was concerned. The only important event in her entire 100-year life was that Auntie Sarah had disappeared. But today, the second most important event had occurred. Annabelle had found something that belonged to Auntie Sarah. No one knew she had found it. Not Kate Palmer, not any of the dolls. And keeping a secret in a house like Annabelle's was awfully hard. It might even be impossible, Annabelle thought, except for the fact that there was no one with whom Annabelle wanted to share a secret. So... Already we know that Annabelle is going to be our main character and Auntie Sarah is definitely going to be someone who plays a big role and then she has been missing for 45 years. So <laughs> here's chapter one, which is called Annabelle Doll's Secret. Annabelle looked around the dollhouse nursery feeling restless. Bobby, she said to her brother, let's play tag. Bobby Doll was propped in a corner by the stairway landing in the dollhouse. That was where Kate Palmer had left him the, had left him before school that morning. Kate Palmer is the human girl who now owns this doll family. It's been passed down. We'll read about that in a second. Do you think it's safe, Annabelle? asked Bobby. The captain is right outside. Annabelle didn't have a chance to answer his question. No, it's not safe, Mama Doll called from downstairs. So there's Bobby and Annabelle in their doll positions where Kate Palmer left them earlier that day. Mama was standing on her head next to the piano, which was where Kate had left her that morning. It was the most uncomfortable position. If you move around now, Kate might come home and see you. And Bobby's right. The captain is just outside. 
Annabelle looked out the side window of the dollhouse and saw the round yellow eye of a cat staring back at her. That's the captain. He's a pretty important character, too. She sighed. Why couldn't the captain take a nap? Annabelle flopped on her bed. She tried to remember where Kate had left her that morning. It had been somewhere in the nursery, on her bed sitting on the floor playing with baby Betsy, calling to Nanny from the doorway. Annabelle got to her feet again and peered through the window. The captain was still standing on the shelf on which the dollhouse sat, staring at the dolls. When he saw Annabelle, he licked his lips. Annabelle stuck her tongue out at him. Scat, she called in her tiny doll voice. Annabelle, hush, said Nanny. Annabelle couldn't see Nanny, but she pushed herself away from the window anyway. This is so boring, she exclaimed. My life is so boring. No one answered her. Kate won't be home from school for ages, she went on. Silence. I'm going to die from boredom, thought Annabelle. She flopped on her bed again. Mama, can I ask you a question, she called out. Is it a quick question? I want to know how Auntie Sarah is related to us. Is she your sister, or is she Papa's, or is Uncle Doll your brother? And Annabelle, that is not a quick question, called Papa Doll from somewhere. And at that moment, Annabelle heard the Palmer's front door slam, heard Kate shout, I'm home, heard feet clattering on the ground. The feet were somewhere near the top of the staircase when Annabelle remembered just where Kate had left her that morning. In a flash, Annabelle scooted across the nursery and landed on Bobby's bed. By the time Kate ran into her room, Annabelle was propped against the headboard, her legs sticking out in front of her, her painted eyes staring ahead. So that's where Kate had left her earlier that day. For the next three hours, while Kate did her third grade homework, telephoned her friend Rachel, and tried to keep her little sister Nora out of her room, Annabelle sat on Bobby's bed and thought about her secret. Her secret was wonderful, and it was the only thing, the only thing that prevented Annabelle from actually dying of boredom. Annabelle recalled the moment when she had made her discovery. It had been during a night when Kate had closed the front of the dollhouse before she had gone to bed. She rarely did this. And when she did, Annabelle was delighted. Emmett the dolls had plenty of privacy during their nighttime the time when the humans slept and the doll family could move about their house. They could be a teensy bit less quiet, a teeny bit more free. Even the captain, who usually snoozed at the end of Kate's bed, couldn't harm them. So Annabelle's explaining how she likes it when Kate closes the dollhouse at night because that means they can do whatever they want. They're a little bit more free because you can't see directly into it at night. Whereas if Kate leaves the dollhouse open at night, they really can't do very much because they could easily be seen. And since they would have more freedom than usual on that night, Mama Doll had said, How about a sing-along and then some free time? Yes! Annabelle had cried. Sing-alongs were always fun, and free time meant time when the dolls could go anywhere in their house and do anything they wanted to do. Within reason. Remember, Papa often said, Never do anything you can't undo by the time Kate wakes up in the morning. The dolls had gathered around the piano in the parlor. Uncle Doll propped two book songbooks in front of him. One was a book of hymns. It had come from England a hundred years earlier with the dolls and the house and the furniture. The other book had been purchased by Mrs. Palmer, Kate's mother, when she was a young girl and the dollhouse had belonged to her. On the cover of the book was a rainbow and written across the yellow band of the rainbow were the words, Great Hits of the Sixties. Let's sing Natural Woman, Annabelle had suggested. Yuck! said Bobby. Okay, then, respect, said Annabelle. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, sang Bobby. Suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, Annabelle chimed in. How about a quieter song, suggested Nanny. The dolls had sung song after song while Uncle Doll played the piano. Here's a picture of them singing together. Outside the dollhouse, Annabelle caught a glimpse of the captain. He sat silently on Kate's bed, listening to the dolls' voices. 
He could barely hear them, but they were there all right. The dolls ended the sing-along after two choruses of bringing in the sheaves from the hymn book, and then their free time began. Annabelle knew exactly what she was going to do. She wanted to examine the books in the library, and she wanted to do it privately. Lately, Kate and Rachel had talked of nothing but someone called Nancy Drew and how she solved her mysteries. They had even read a couple of the mysteries aloud to each other, and Annabelle had listened intently. She wished she could be a detective like Nancy, and now she thought she might find something interesting on the dollhouse bookshelves. It was unlikely, but possible. Annabelle knew that most of the books on the shelves were not real. They were simply flat blocks painted bright colors with book titles written on one side in gold ink. But perhaps she might find a secret compartment on one of the shelves. Things like that were always happening to Nancy. So in the glow of Kate's nightlight, Annabelle had begun her search. She started by removing the books from the shelves one by one. Presently, she discovered that some of the books were attached to one another. She could remove a whole block of books at once. This is interesting, but not very mysterious. Then she discovered that some of the books were in fact real, like the song books. She could open their covers and inside were a few pages with crowded writing. Classics of modern poetry, Oliver Twist. Annabelle read the 20-page story about the little boy named Oliver with great interest. Eagerly, she pulled out every book from the shelves, but the others were pretend. She checked for secret compartments. Nothing. She stood on a stool and tackled the next shelf. Only pretend books. She stood on tiptoe and reached for the shelf above, and that was where she found Auntie Sarah's journal. From the outside, it looked like all the other books on the shelves. It was dark green with gold writing stamped on the color cover. The title was My Journal. She looks pretty excited there, doesn't she? It was fatter than most of the books, though, and contained dozens of pages as thin as onion skin, filled with spidery black handwritings and even some drawings. Annabelle stepped off of the stool and sat on the floor to look through My Journal. She opened to the first page, and there she found the words, The Private Diary of Sarah Dahl, May 1955. Sarah Dahl. <gasps> that must be Auntie Sarah, Annabelle had thought. She gasped, and when she heard the voices of Mama and Papa on the staircase, she had shoved the book under the hem of her long dress. Annabelle, Mama had said, let's have a bit of family time while we can still talk freely, and then we'll have to go back to our places. Kate will be up soon. All right, replied Annabelle. She had managed to scurry upstairs without anyone seeing the book, and she had hidden it under the covers of her bed. She knew that was dangerous. What if Kate, of all people, should find the book there while she was playing in the dollhouse? But Annabelle couldn't help herself. For the last week, she had read the book in snatches whenever Kate was gone or asleep, and Annabelle's family was in the other room. Each time she read a few more pages, she would close the book and once again place it under the covers, feeling restless. Annabelle was used to feeling bored, but not restless. Something was wrong with her life. Something was missing. It wasn't anything specific, such as a hairbrush or a shoe. Annabelle didn't even think it was Auntie Sarah. Not exactly. It was... What was it? Was it possible to miss something you never had? Annabelle now sat stiffly on Bobby's bed, waiting for Kate to be called downstairs for supper. She thought about the last time the dolls had seen Auntie Sarah. Annabelle remembered it as a day like any other, except that one moment Auntie Sarah was in the parlor, and the next moment she wasn't. She hadn't been seen since. Annabelle thought again about Auntie Sarah's journal. Many of the pages were filled with drawings, mainly drawings of spiders. In some of the drawings, Auntie Sarah had even labeled the parts of the spiders. Annabelle had read just a few of the pages of words, and this had taken her a long time because Auntie Sarah's crawly handwriting was hard to read. All Auntie Sarah had learned so far was that daily life in night. All Annabelle had learned so far was that daily life in 1955 had barely been different from Annabelle's life today. <sighs> Annabelle let out a sigh, hoping Kate wouldn't hear her. If Kate had a secret, Annabelle thought, who would she tell it to? So we can definitely describe Annabelle as kind of lonely, a little bit bored and sad. Um, in her family of dolls, she's the only girl her age. Um, so I'm wondering, 
already predictions in my mind. I'm thinking, what if she had a friend? I wonder if the author's going to present us with a friend later in the book. Um, something else I wanted to show you, since you're, if you're just joining us and you're new to this book, um, the um, illustrator did a really nice thing for us. And if you look at the front of this book, you see it's got the lock and the house looks a little bit older. And you see um, Annabelle and her older doll family inside the house. Um, and then we don't know who this character is yet. We're going to meet her very soon. But then if we flip to the back of the book, we have a dollhouse that looks totally different with totally different characters. And we can see that there's a big old mess in there too. So um, that is a great tool, a great key for us to make predictions and figure out what we think is going to happen in this book. So um, hope you enjoyed that and check out the other chapters and I'll be back on later today um, with chapter four. Have a great day.